What's up everybody, my name is Joe Brown and this is Heresy Financial. Now you know by now I've made a ton of videos on the whole debt ceiling issue and if we do not resolve either suspending or raising the debt ceiling by sometime somewhere in October, the treasury will run out of emergency funds and will start to default on things like principal and interest payments on its debt and not be able to make payments to Social Security, Medicare, and military among other things. Now everybody is always so quick to point out there's absolutely no way this doesn't get resolved no way it doesn't get suspended or raised and there's no way they're just going to default on their payments but there is somebody that doesn't think it's so unlikely that it's not worth at least putting together a plan just in case it happens and surprisingly, that is the Federal Reserve. Yes, the Federal Reserve thinks it's likely enough that the federal government starts to default on its payments, that it doesn't figure this out by October, that they have a plan in place on how to start moving forward, how to start dealing with the ramifications of that should that happen. So in this video, we're going to look at that plan and just how crazy it gets. Ready? Let's dive in. All right, so some of you might remember back in 2011 and 2013, there were some similar issues going on with the debt ceiling. And it looks like at that time, the Federal Reserve put together a plan on how to deal with it should there be a default. And both Yellen and Powell were at the Federal Reserve at this time. Yellen eventually became the chair of the Federal Reserve, as did Jerome Powell, who's currently the chair. And Yellen is now uh, in charge of the Treasury. And so they're familiar with the details. They would be able to coordinate with each other extremely efficiently efficiently to make sure that they deal with any hiccups as they came along. Now, the first part of this plan includes managing government payments. That's right. So we already know the Federal Reserve steps outside of their legal boundaries. The Federal Reserve Act says specifically what they can and can't do. And we saw, especially over the last year and a half, whenever there's an emergency or if there is a need to maintain market stability or some outlier reason like that, they will step outside of their legal boundaries, what they're allowed to do by law and just do it anyway. One of these things was setting up special purpose vehicles held at the treasury, funding those vehicles and using those vehicles to purchase assets that they're not allowed to purchase with their own uh, and hold them on their own balance sheet. So it's just like, I'm not allowed to go to the, uh, to, to the store. I'm not allowed to go to the store and buy uh, alcohol because I'm 18, let's say. So I give some money to my uh, 21 year old cousin and he goes and he buys alcohol for us. That's exactly what's going on here. The tread, the, the federal reserve couldn't buy any of these corporate bonds or some of these things that they wanted to buy. So they just gave the money to the treasury and had the treasury buy it in their own accounts. But that is child's play compared to the plan on what happens if this debt ceiling issue is not resolved and the government can't make any of its payments. The first thing they would do is prioritize the principal and interest payments on the outstanding debt for the government and then make decisions day by day on what other expenses for the government they would step into fund as well. Way beyond, I mean, this is the exact thing thing that the uh, when they were uh, putting together the Federal Reserve Act that they wanted to avoid to have the Federal Reserve, which is a money printer, be able to fund any and all expenses for the government. That was the thing everybody was scared of. And so they set up all these legal fences and so to prevent that from ever happening. And so this would be literally in direct violation of what they're allowed to do. But in times of emergency, what are you going to do? Just go for it anyway. Now, the second thing that is crazy is they would change the rules for banks on what they are allowed to hold as and count as collateral. And so obviously as a bank, if you have to, are holding something as collateral, uh, you have to make sure that's a good asset, right? That was the whole thing in the global financial crisis was all of this collateral on all these banks balance sheets. They were garbage uh, mortgage backed securities that were uh, defaulted. They weren't worth anything, right? And so if treasuries are, uh, th would be the same thing in this case, if the, if the United States government couldn't make their principal or interest payments, those treasuries are worthless, right? And so this is crazy because the Federal Reserve would basically say, hey, all these uh, defaulted treasuries, you can just hold them on your balance sheet anyway and count them as treasuries and or count them as collateral and we'll say that they're good. Now, obviously in a circumstance like this, anybody and everybody who could or wanted to would be selling those treasuries. And so this is where the third crazy thing comes in that is kind of expected. The Federal Reserve would 
step up to start purchasing, ramping up their treasury purchases to purchase all these treasuries that uh, everybody wanted to dump since they were defaulted on. And so instead of, you know, $120 billion a month that they're buying right now, maybe that goes to a trillion dollars in a month or however many of these treasuries start to get sold as they're literally defaulted. They were supposed to be the safest asset in the world and now all of a sudden they're worthless, but they're not worthless because you can still sell them for their full amount because there's a buyer with a money printer who will buy as many of them as necessary. So anybody in the world can still sell as many of them as they want and they don't have to take a loss. And then the fourth thing that they would do is they would ramp up their operations in the repo market. Now this repo market thing is uh, really uh, interesting to me because I didn't really think about it before, but they recently set up their new standing repo facility, one of them for domestic, one of them for international, so that any financial institution who needs to can access directly access the Federal Reserve in the repo market because outside of these standing repo facilities, uh, financial institutions operate uh, with each other in the repo market for uh, cash or collateral needs. So this opens up the door, these standing repo facilities that the Federal Reserve set up opens up the door for any financial institution. So this would be yet another way if everybody had all of this bad collateral, bad collateral, they would be able to access the Fed's cash because they wouldn't be able to go to each other to get cash because just like that happened in the, uh, the great financial crisis 12 years ago, uh, they weren't able to uh, go to each other to get their cash needs in the repo market with their mortgage-backed securities. And so the Federal Reserve was looked at as the, you know, the lender of last resort there. Now, apparently there were a couple other things that were looked at as possibilities, like directly funding money market accounts, buying defaulted treasury bills from these money markets, or selling treasuries that have not been defaulted on at the same time as you're buying the ones that are defaulted. And Powell said that this is, uh, this is not something that they would want to do because while the, he said the economics of it are right, it would make it appear as if you're trying to just make the problem go away. You think? All of this would be you making the problem going away. That's why these legal uh, things are set up in place to prevent you from doing any of this because those problems are supposed to be there to prevent the government from going too much into debt, from not being able to uh, make the right decisions. And so you doing any of this is you making the problem going away, which is just hilarious. But in any case, he said he wouldn't rule it out in a catastrophic situation. And would you think that if the government the United States of America starts to default on treasuries, which are the pristine collateral, the foundation of the global financial system, started to default, do you think that would count as a catastrophic situation? I'd be willing to bet yes. So we'll see how this unfolds. I don't think this is gonna result in a government default. I do think that politicians at the end of the day will recognize that it's more painful to spark a global financial catastrophe than it is to vote for a debt ceiling increase, but we shall see. Crazier things have happened and it looks like the Federal Reserve thinks it's at least likely enough to make sure we have a plan in place just in case. As always, I really appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.